بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي <coughs> so today today inshallah we will be discussing about the um, the two other daughters of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Last week we talked about Zainab radiallahu ta'ala who was the older daughter of the Prophet alayhi salam. Today we'll be talking about Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha and as well as uh, Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha. And then inshallah next week we'll be wrapping up the children of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with uh, the mention of uh, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. The reason why we cover, the reason why we will be covering Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha and Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha is for a few reasons. Number one is that Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha and uh, her biography is not in great detail in the books of history. And number two is that because both of them eventually married uh, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. So we first talk about Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha was the second daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, born after Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. And just like, um, just like anyone else, Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha took well care of Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha while they were young. She would help her mother out and take care of uh, Ruqayya in, to the best of her capacity because there was not so much of an age gap between Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha and Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Um, there was a much bigger gap between Zainab and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and that's why Zainab hel- helped out more in taking care of Fatima um, than uh, taking care of Ruqayya. Nonetheless, after Ruqayya came Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha and while they were young, Umm Kulthum and Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, they built a strong relationship. They were very close um, to one another and, and especially after the marriage of Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, um, then these two sisters became even more closer to one another. Now, before the uh, before prophethood, um, before prophethood, um, there was a time when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that these two girls, uh, Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala, uh, I mean Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum rather, Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum, the second and third daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they had reached the age of marriage. And so what happened was that Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came to the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, and said to him that, why don't you now consider getting your two daughters married? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked that, do you have anyone in mind? He replied, yes, I have the two sons of Abu Lahab in mind. Now, even before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given prophethood, when the Prophet ﷺ approached his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha about this proposal, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha was somewhat skeptical um, about this. And she was, um, there, was there was more pessimism uh, um, involved. Um, and therefore, she was not really sure that whether she is okay with this marriage or not. Because we have, she has two of her daughters going into one household. And the reason why she was very pessimistic is because that she was very well aware of the nature, the attitude, and the demeanor of the wife of Abu Lahab. And so because of her nature and because of her attitude, and not only that, but, but because of the attitude of Abu Lahab, that's why Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anha, initially she had hesitated. But when she saw that this was the wish of the uncle of the Prophet, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of course, now he's not a prophet, so he has not seen like the dark side of Abu Lahab. So therefore, he gave in and he said, "Yes, I have no problem with that." And therefore, their nikah and their marriage was conducted. So you have the two daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam married to the two sons of Abu Lahab. Now, after prophethood. As we know that there were first the three years which was called the time when there was a private da'wah or the da'wah was not public. And that is where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he gave da'wah to a few certain people. After the revelation of the ayah where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he says وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ That now you need to take your da'wah to the public mass. 
what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does and what he did and what we all know is that he gathered everyone at the mountain and then he made a, a, a proclaim that I am the Prophet of Allah. Now the story is long, but to keep the story short, when Abu Lahab was gathered there, um, at the very end of this announcement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Lahab, he, he said that Tabban laka ya Muhammad Ali hadha jama'atana That woe to you O Muhammad That did you gather us here for this reason And because he used these words Tabban laka That's why immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He revealed the surah That tabbat yada abi lahabim watab that as, as Abu Lahab was very disrespectful to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he used this, these words that are considered as very derogatory um, so therefore Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala used those same derogatory words for Abu Lahab and not for only Abu Lahab but his wife also now it says that when the wife of Abu Lahab found out about this and she heard about the surah and the revelation of the surah. She came to the masjid, and um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting there with Abu Bakr radiyallahu taala an. And she came, and she had something in her hand, and she wanted to strike the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with that. But shockingly, what happened was that when she came to the masjid, she saw Abu Bakr radiyallahu taala an. And she asked Abu Bakr radiyallahu taala an that where is your companion Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Now this was very shocking and odd and awkward for Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an because a minute ago he was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's still sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when this, this lady, the wife of Abu Lahab, when she comes, she, Muhammad, the, the Prophet alayhi wa is sitting right there, but she's talking to Abu Bakr that where is your friend? Where is your companion? And I swear if I see him, I will do this and that to him. And after she left, Abu Bakr was like, he was in a state of bewilderment. He was shocked. And he says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Ya Rasulullah, you're sitting here next to me, I can see you. But she came and she could not see you. And that is where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He hid me, He hid me from her and, and He did not expose me before her. Now, after this moment, from there on, from there onward, it says that the you know Abu Lahab, um, the father, I mean the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his wife, they tried everything in their power, and they would they would never stop, and they would constantly do everything in their power to hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even at a time when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he lost one of his sons. Um, it said that Abu Lahab, while the Prophet ﷺ is going through this moment of grief, it said that Abu Lahab is celebrating the death. Can you imagine? He is celebrating the death of the son of Rasulullah ﷺ, and he lives right next door to the Prophet ﷺ. So this is who Abu Lahab was. And therefore, the Quraysh, they came to Abu Lahab, and they said that you have two of his daughters. Your two sons are married to the two daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and why are you holding them? Divorce them. Tell your sons to divorce them. And therefore, he went home and he told his two sons um, that to divorce the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And therefore, the two daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam were sent back home. Ruqayya radiyallahu ta'ala anha and Umm Kulthum radiyallahu ta'ala anha they were sent back home and they were divorced and just stopping over here for a moment I just want to say something here is that once again this goes back to show you that how many sacrifices Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he went through we talked about this before uh, when we talked about his sons um, that he lost uh, seven of his kids he lost six of them during his life so that in itself is very painful for any parent but on top of that, can you imagine the Prophet ﷺ seeing two of his daughters get divorced right in front of his eyes because he called people to La ilaha illallah. And for any parent, for any parent, there are people, there are a lot of parents that they, you know, their, their sons have been divorced, um, they have gone through a divorce, their daughters have been through a divorce, and, um, and it's never difficult for, is, I mean, it's never uh, easy for any family. I've met several families in the past 
um, and you know they just you know you they will sit with you and they will tell you that please make dua for my son he was previously divorced and you know he is going through this emotional roller coaster in his life can you please make dua my daughter was divorced so for any person to see their children being divorced divorced oh or go through the process of divorce is never easy but here we find Rasulullah wasallam that this did not happen to only one daughter of the Prophet wasallam. This happened to two daughters of the Prophet wasallam, and they both happened on the same day. They have both happened on the same day. So this is, you know, this goes to show you that, in, and I've said this before, that in our lives when we go through grief, we have to always find consolation in the life of Rasulullah wasallam. Because no matter what position we are in, you know, you will find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that position in some capacity. Uh, so that's why it's very important that we always study the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what happened was that the two daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were divorced. They came back to the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even after that, they just began to see the amount and the increase in the hate and the animosity of the Quraysh and therefore they would always do everything in their power Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha and also uh, Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha they would do everything in their power to help the cause of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that it said that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an was looking for a suitable spouse and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, he requested that um, that uh, you know that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an get married to his daughter Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha and this in you know and when the Quraysh found out that that the daughter of the Prophet has married Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an keeping in mind is that Uthman was a very prestigious man amongst the Quraysh and what goes to and the reason I say this is because you know going deep down into history if you remember the story of Hudaybiyah, the story of Hudaybiyah, when the Prophet ﷺ was outside of Mecca, he first thought about sending Abu Bakr, he never sent Abu Bakr. He was thinking of sending um, Umar, he never sent Umar. Who did he send? He sent Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. Why? Because Uthman, he had this demeanor that he was calm. He knew how to negotiate. He knew how to talk to people very well. And not only that, but he had a very good rapport with the Quraysh. And therefore, when the Quraysh found out that he has married the daughter of Rasulullah wasallam, many of them were upset because they wanted the daughter of the Prophet wasallam, just like her father, for her to go through afflictions and torture and therefore when she when they found out that she married um, um, they were very very upset um, it said that when Ruqayya and uh, Uthman they married there was a, a unique type of bond and love that existed before them and between them it said that uh, uh, Zubair uh, he, uh, he mentions that one time Rasulullah wasallam he sent a man to give a gift to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. When he went to go give that gift, he sort of took his time in coming back. When that man came back, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked him that what took you so long in coming back? And he says that I went to the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an and Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha and I stay there for a while because when I saw the bond between Ruqayya and Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, it was so amazing that it is a unique type of bond that I have not seen within many families. And so he was so, he was so taken away by this bond that he stood there for some time and he watched. Um, at this time, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, while she was married to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, the very, the very first batch of Muslims migrated to Abyssinia and it said that um, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha was part of that group. She migrated with uh, her husband, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. And after some time, it said that when they heard about the Islam of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an and Hamza radiallahu ta'ala an, they came back with the hopes that things have turned around in Mecca, but when they came back, they found that things were the opposite. Rather, there was more hatred, there was more animosity and more bigotry that the Quraysh were spreading against the Muslims. But, and then you had the second batch of Muslims who went to Abyssinia, but Uthman and his wife, they refused to be part of that second batch. Rather, what they did was that they went um, and they migrated 
with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to Medina. And what happened was that um, later on, the other um, the other two daughters. You had Umm Kulthum who was unmarried at that time, Fatima who was unmarried at that time. They migrated with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You remember that we talked about this last week that Zainab was left in Mecca because. She, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, that I'm waiting for a decision to come from Allah subhanahu wa taala about Zainab, and then Ruqayya she had migrated with Uthman radiyallahu taala an. Now it said that Allah subhanahu wa taala granted um, um, granted um, Uthman radiyallahu taala an and Ruqayya radiyallahu taala anha with a beautiful child. Uh, it was a baby boy, and uh, they took care of this child very very much. And it said that um, what happened was that um, one day, and you have to understand that their homes were not like our homes. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention: when Ruqayya came back from Abyssinia, of course, at that time they never had social media, they never had phones. So if someone passed away, the only way you would come to know if someone passed away is when you would come back in town. When Ruqayya came back in town. That is when she found out that her mother had passed away, that Khadija had passed away. So already this was a difficult moment for um, Ruqayya radiAllahu taala anha. And then a year, two years later, there came the Hijrah. So she migrated. Allah subhanahu wa taala granted them with a baby boy. But what happened one day was that an animal came around and it pecked, and it pecked um, the um, it pecked the eye. Of the the son of Ruqayya radiAllahu taala an, um, and what happened was that you know that in the houses during those times, and not only that, but if you go to many countries nowadays, uh, many of the third world countries, and the houses which are not very like well structured, you have animals coming by time after time. Just today, I saw. Uh, today, I was watching. I was looking on. I was looking at my Facebook account, and there was a. They found that in India today, there was a leopard walking through a public school, like a school with children. So you find animals just like, you know, animals walking through. Anyway, an animal came and it pecked the eye of the son of Uthman of Allah Taala An, and because of that, um, he he had an infection, and because of that infection, he passed away. And after he passed away, that was an extremely difficult moment for Ruqayya radiAllahu taala anha, and that is why she became sick. You know, people in general they are they are absolutely okay, but when they are traumatized by a certain loss in their life, they become extremely sick. And I have seen people like that in my own life that everything is going well, and a tragedy happens in their family or in their life. And they become so sick, and in many cases, I have seen people who have been diagnosed with cancer, and they pass away. And the root cause of all this, all these problems, were that one tragedy that took place. So, because of this tragedy that struck Ruqayya radiAllahu taala anha, she became extremely sick. Now, in the second year of Hijrah, the Battle of Badr took place. The Battle of Badr took place, and at that time, when the when the announcement was made. At that time, everyone who was with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they went for the battle of Badr, but the only one who, or one of the ones who did not go and participate in the battle of Badr was Uthman radiAllahu taala an. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually told Uthman that you stay behind and you take care of your wife. And there's a very powerful lesson. Wallahi, there's a very powerful lesson in this, and that is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam understands very well the importance of dawa. He gave dawa all his life, but at the same time, he understood the importance of family. And this is something that's very, very important. And if you remember, in the old in the old facility, I gave a khutbah about striking a balance within our families. There are a lot of us who are busy with work. There are a lot of us who are busy with dawa, and there are a lot of us who are busy with other charitable organizations. And we're doing a lot of good outside the house. But what's very important is that, as far as dawa is concerned. You cannot go and give dawa while your family is suffering behind. If a person is only focused on dawa and they leave behind their family, then they may be giving dawa, but they are neglecting their family. And here, what we see from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this gesture of his is a very powerful gesture. He's telling Uthman radiallahu taala that this is the very first battle of Islam. 
yet you are not going to be participating because you have someone sick at home and you should stay there. And not only that, but even like um, for those of you who know that Uwais Qarni was a very famous tabi'i. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, SubhanAllah, he wanted to come and visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he did not because he had to take care of his mother. And that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned Uwais Qarni, and he told Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, that if you ever see this man, if you ever see this man, tell him to make dua for you because he is mustajabu da'wa. That whenever he makes dua, his dua is accepted. And why did this happen? It's because if there was any other person, they would have said that visiting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very important for me and they would have neglected their family, they would have neglected their mother. But here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is praising this man, Uwais Qarni, because he, he gave preference to taking care of his mother over coming and visiting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is once again very, very powerful. We have to take care of our families. We have to look after our families. Our families are very, very precious to us. And if there is anything, if I need to go out of town for any kind of da'wah purposes, and I know behind that my family will suffer, then we need to stay at home and we need to take care of our families. So this is something I just want to mention because this is just something very, very powerful with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet alayhi wa sallam, he went for Badr. They came back. When they came back, um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the very first thing he did was he went to the masjid. He performed his two rakah salat. He then went to the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. The very first thing he did, he went to the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. And he asked Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. And Uthman then informed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that your daughter, while you were gone, she passed away. And this was an extremely difficult moment for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now after this, uh, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, he remained single for a while. It was um, in those days that after some time that Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha, the daughter of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, she also became a widow. She lost her husband. And therefore, um, Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, knowing very well that uh, Uthman has just lost his wife too, so he came to offer his daughter in the hand of marriage to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, he simply remained silent because he had heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, being interested in the daughter of Umar, uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, and therefore Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he went when he met Umar the next time he said to Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, that how about I marry your daughter and how about Uthman marry someone who is better than your daughter which is my daughter Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha and that is why uh, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, that is how Uthman married uh, Umm Kulthum the second daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, we, um, the day, it said that the day when Umm Kulthum got married, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is, it is mentioned in Ibn Majah, narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, that one time the Prophet, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he was coming, he saw Uthman in the masjid. And he came inside and he told Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have been informed, and Jibreel alayhi salam has told me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to marry Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha, and therefore this is why this marriage took place. Um, the day when Umm Kulthum got married, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered Umm Ayman to take care and to, uh, to dress her very well for her marriage. And some days after, um, they got married. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he asked Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha that how did you find your husband? And she said that I have found my husband to be a very, very good man. It said that the, the mahar or the bride gift that was given to Ruqayya, the same amount of bride gift was given to Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha. And, um, and of course, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an and Umm Kulthum, they lived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not grant them any children so they, they they did not have any children but what is mentioned is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um he was um he of course would go time after time to check on his own daughter he would go and check on um on his son-in-law uh, uthman radiallahu ta'ala an and it said that in the ninth year in the ninth year after hijrah 
it said that Umar Kuthum, she passed away. And it said that uh, during, her, um, during her burial process, it said that the Prophet ﷺ, he was standing outside the room where she was being bathed and she was being washed. And as the time of kafan came around, the Prophet ﷺ, he gave the appropriate clothing to the people to cover her up. As you know that when it comes to the fiqh of, jan of janazah, um, f as far as men are concerned, Men are wrapped in three different sheets of cloth. As far as women are concerned, there are five different types of clothing or five different types of things that are, um, that are related to a woman. So they have the three things which the men they use, but they use uh, another piece of cloth or a sheet that covers the upper part of the body and they use something else that covers uh, their hair. So the Prophet ﷺ standing outside that room, he gave these cloths and these sheets uh, to the people inside and they wrapped her up and um, they took her and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was extremely, um, he was extremely, uh, he was in grief, uh, extremely gr um, in grief um, at the death of Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha. He was crying uh, quite a bit. Of course, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anha was very upset because he had lost his second wife and it said that after that, it was after that, that when Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anha, you know that the Prophet Sallallahu doesn't have any more daughters, Fatima, who was the last one, was married to Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. So therefore, in order to make things easier for Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, that is when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told the people that you should get your daughters, if, anyone, if any of you have daughters, you should get them married to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, for he is a very noble man. And that is when he said that if I had more daughters, I would have given them into the marriage of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. So therefore, this is, um, so this was Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. Now, as far as I checked, I could not find anything um, um, in the books of Sirah that who did Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an marry after that. I'm sure that he married after that, but that might be, that might be in some other books which I did not uh, research into those other books. But what I found in the Sirah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that there is no mention of Uthman marrying anyone else. Uh, that does, once again, that does not mean that he did not marry anyone else. He probably did marry someone else after that. Um, and so this brings us to the end of Umm Kuthum radiallahu ta'ala anha. And so that is why, uh, once again, the last thing is that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anha was given the laqab in the title as Dhunurain, the one of two lights, because he married the two daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I do want to mention about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anha, but I will keep that for later because once we finish with the, with the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will be getting into the lives of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And at that time, we'll be talking about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anha because he had many great characteristics. So this brings us to Umm al Kulthum. Next week, inshallah, we'll be covering Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uh, and her life is in great detail. So. Uh, if we cannot finish that in one week, we may, we may take two weeks on that. But inshallah next week, um, probably next week or the next two weeks, we'll be covering Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, the last child of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be covered. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the ability to give us the iman like these people had and give us a sabr uh, and the iman as these people had. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanallah bihamdi. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.